Hello there, I'm Simon, uh, ex-pupil student understudy of the great Yoda's batting wisdom and uh, I'm talking a little bit about your cricket head, uh, what goes on between your ears when you play in order to play better. Uh, if you saw the last little video that was about controlling how you feel and uh, today we're just going to have a quick yarn about beliefs and how important beliefs are. Um, when you're less than seven years of age, your brain is what's in uh, what's called in theta mode. Theta mode basically means that you are like a sponge. You can learn 30 languages. And um, that's where all your programs and your beliefs are formed about whether you're good enough, you know, whether you're going to struggle, whether you're not going to struggle. And people carry these programs all the time. It's possible to actually change your beliefs and for, to make them more positive, because most people don't have very strong beliefs about themselves, by um, positive self-talk. Yep. So you've heard from sports psychs maybe talking about positive self-talk, and you might be aware that you have a little voice going on in your mind talking to you all the time, usually saying negative stuff. Psychologists will tell you that 80% of our, our thoughts are repetitive, 80% of those are negative. So it's up to us to actually insert positive thoughts in order to generate positive beliefs. And you do this through positive self-talk. The greatest exponent of this was Muhammad Ali. You know, he's the greatest sports person in you know, the last century. But um, I mean, he was more than a sports person, wasn't he? Really, he was before my time, before all of our time. But you can go and look at him in YouTube. And what, why he was so remarkable and why I loved him was because of his joyous self-talk that he put into poetry and um, he was able to convince himself that he was the greatest a long time before people were proclaiming as the greatest and it was because the constant talk that he'd reinforce himself with so here's a Muhammad Ali poet for you to let you know how organized he was to, to pump himself up black kid southern states this is when racism was at its height, and he would convince himself that he was the greatest before anyone was saying he was the greatest. You know, uh, sitting next to Liberace, Liberace says, do the one about you for a change, Cassius. This is what he produced, 21-year-old black guy who's dyslexic. This is the legend of Cassius Clay, the most beautiful fighter in the world today. He talks a great deal and brags indeed of a muscular punch that's incredibly speedy. The fistic world was dull and weary. With a chap like Liston, things had to be dreary. And someone with colour, someone with dash, brought fight fans running with cash. This kid fights great. He's got speed and endurance. So if you sign to fight him, increase your insurance. This kid's got a left. This kid's got a right. And if he hits you once, you'll sleep for the night. And as you lie on the floor and the ref counts to ten, you pray that you won't have to fight me again. For I am the man this poem is about, next champ of the world, there isn't a doubt. And I'll tell you here that I know the score, I'll be champ of the world in 64. If Cassius say a bee can pull a plow, don't ask how, hitch him up. This is a man with unchallengeable belief and external perspectives, naysayers, other people saying that he was a joke, as there were many at the time, people thought he was going to get killed when he fought Sonny Liston, meant nothing to him because he had such strong internal belief. And this came from the way he spoke to himself. So guard your words carefully that you speak to yourself and manage your thoughts that turn into words. Ultimately, everything depends on your belief. As Henry Ford said, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. All that matters is how much you believe. Take that away. Go play some cricket.